Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be continuing our Min IO adventure for object storage. So in our last video, we created a Min IO server. In this video, we'll be showing you around the Min IO um, CLI that they have. Um, to kind of navigate, upload, download, move, um, or create buckets um, using its CLI instead of the GUI. So this is, you know, useful for when you have to do backend processing. So say, for example, like you want to back up, you know, system configuration files to your MinIO storage, uh, object storage um, on like your Linux box. And it would make sense to, you know, hey, we're going to just have a job that runs and copies these files to our bucket um, as opposed to hey we're gonna go grab all the files and then go log into the GUI and go upload it doesn't make much sense right um, so the CLI is very useful for stuff like that or just if you are like me and like using the CLI a lot better than using GUI interface um, it works out pretty well so we'll be showing you how you can do that um, with that so let's get started all right so we created a test bucket. We got a, an object in here from our last video. Um, but what we're going to do here is we will uh, Google search uh, min IO object storage for Linux. Um, and then we'll click the first link here and scroll down. So this is, this is um, doing like the server installation. This was a little bit different than the other um, one that we used, but it was very similar. Um, but if you scroll all the way down, there's an optional install the min.io client. That's what we're going to use here. Um, so we'll split the screen up in half and you can install this client on any machine. It doesn't necessarily have to be the server itself that you install it. In this case, we are just installing it on the server, but we can install this on like our local machine um, or something else. So what we'll do, um, so I already got wget installed, so we will install wget here, uh, use wget to grab the mc binary, sorry. Um, so we'll let that grab here real quick. All right, so the binary is installed. What we'll do is make sure that it is executable, and then we will move it to our user local bin. Um, this allows it so that it's now pass. so when we run it, we don't need to type in the whole uh, setting here. Um, and then from here, this is like setting this alias, which is kind of like um, if you if you've ever used AWS, it's kind of like your AWS config type situation. So this would be your access key, and this would be your secret key. So how you do set that up is if you go in here, you we will be able to let's um, go to somewhere <clears throat> access keys right here. And we will create an access key here. Um, by default, it'll just randomly create one, which is great. Um, and you, you can just hit create after after that. So we'll just name this our um, test key and we'll create it. Um, and then it'll pop up with this where it's your access key and secret key. You can copy these down and this will only appear um, at the, the, the secret will only appear. So you won't ever get the secret again. Um, and it's similar to like IAM and AWS, you, you get the secret key once and you don't ever get it again. So if you if you ever lose it, you have to create a new one, which is actually good practice in my opinion. Um, so we'll use these keys um, and run this. So what we'll do, um, gotta scroll back down, is essentially do the MC alias. We'll set the alias. In this case, a local is what they say, but I can set it to be whatever. So like we will do like MC alias set, and then we'll set like server, for example. Um, and this is because this only, this would work if you're running it on the server itself also. Um, but in most cases, if you would just do it like on a client, you would just do like your, your domain name. So in this case, I'm just gonna do the domain name here, dragon.local and then 9,000. And then it's the secret access key and then secret key afterwards. Um, so we'll grab the access key, paste that, and then we'll grab the secret key and we'll paste that and we'll maximize this so you can kind of see it in one line. So we'll set the alias and the alias will be called server in this case um, for this address, um, which will <laughs> pop up when I click on it um, with this access key and secret key. So we should be able to hit that it will essentially add the configuration in all the places. 
Um, so now we can close this. So you can see if I clicked on this, it won't show me the secret key again. Um, but we should now be able to do this, MC admin info, and then we will do server instead of local because we named the alias server. So MC admin info server. So you can see that um, this has been running up for 16 minutes. We got one network, we got one drive, and we got one pool. Um, so not much info, just kind of the info that we would need. But what we can do here now is if you we were to look up um, MC, uh, min IO CLI uh, client, there is actually a list of commands that you can run um, in here that will essentially do very similar things to what you would see. So we can do like an MC cat, we can do a CP, a diff, a DU, we can do some encryption, we can add some events. Um, so to kind of go through it, we'll kind of show you. So if you want to do, like list your bucket, we can do MC LS and we'll do server. So this is the alias for the server. So say for example, um, you named a different alias, you would change this obviously. Um, so we're listing the server. So in this case, we got a test bucket. Um, you can do server test bucket in here and you can see that there is a random document in here. Um, so with with like the command line here, um, it's actually pretty simple where you we can do just like how you would use in Linux. Um, so we could do like MC and um, so let's do that again. Server test bucket. Um, I want to get the name. So we can do like an MC copy server test bucket and this random document and we can copy it to locally. Oh, you got to type test bucket one word. There we go. So now we can see that it copied down. And if we were to LS, we can see we got our random document PDF. You can obviously do the exact same. We can do a copy like the min IO RPM. We can copy it to server test bucket. And now if we were to MC LS server test bucket, we can see now that we have the RPM in there. You can also see that the GUI will get updated for this object browser. So um, we need to refresh that, but we can see that in here, we added this in here and it was really quick, right? Um, which is the whole point of this. Um, so you can do your LS, you can do your CPs. You can also make a bucket. So like say for example, I wanted to do MC make bucket server test bucket two. We can see that it created a test bucket and we can do that, see that it creates a test bucket too. So you can also create buckets. Um, and then there's us cool other things like tearing and site replication, which we will probably do in a different video and play around with um, later. But um, the command line is pretty standard depending on what you want to do. So um, there are other options outside of just file manipulation, um, but the probably big thing will be, you know, the file manipulation stuff where you can move, copy, um, you can also remove, and I think that's just, oh, I think that's just RM, right? Let me just double check. It looks like it would probably be RM. MC RM, yeah. So we can remove stuff too. We can uh, remove a bucket or just remove a file. So we can do like uh, MC RM uh, server or RB for remove bucket, server test the bucket two. Um, so now we can see that this doesn't exist anymore and it's just the test bucket. So uh, the command line is pretty simple. You just gotta install the binary, get it in there, um, and then you can play around with all these commands and see what you can use um, in regards to what you need. So there you go, guys. That's how you install the client and how you do a little bit of a file uh, and bucket stuff. So. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.